No, no, honey, it's okay. It's okay. I don't have to remember things. Daniel, take your time. They've given you a little medicine. For the Who gave me what? Come on, you're in the Who hospital. Who gave me this? It's okay. I'm in the hospital? Yes. Felicia, yes. I cannot be here. I you're told you many times that... You're here to get well. Come on, lie back. Come on, lie back. Come on, pal. They're not in charge here. I am. I'm going to see to it that you get the help you need. Now, don't make me beat up on a sick person. I hate that. You would do this too. Oh, if you make me. Oh. oh, honey, you're in pain, aren't you? The only pain is for woman to be boss of man. <sighs> Let's see if I can find you some medicine for that, all right? Okay. Miss Gallon. Oh, come on in, doctor, please. I'll be right back, okay? If you have any information on Sergei's condition, you really should say it in front of him. He, he needs to know. Oh, I'm sure he, he also does. needs some medicine for pain. Oh, I, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can really do about that. I'm not a doctor. Oh. I'm, my name is Bellick, and I'm with Hospital Admissions. Oh, I see. And um, I'm sorry, Miss Gallant. I'm afraid we're not going to be able to treat your friend. We're going to have to transfer him to a charity hospital. No, Matthew. I, no word at all. Oh, I didn't expect it. He's not... Uh, Stark isn't going to announce his move. Yeah, I know. I, I feel the same way. Once we threatened him, I thought he would do something by now. Yes, I want the hard glare of publicity on him. I don't care that we don't have a photograph. It doesn't matter what he looks like. It matters what he's done. Yeah, so run it. Run it in the Herald right away. I know it's the calm before the storm, but I want a preemptive strike. Yes, I'm sure. Lila and the baby went out. Yes. Yes, there are security people with her. Twins are asleep. Nap. Amanda's still asleep. Poor kid, she's exhausted. I'm gonna let her sleep as long as possible. Jordan Stark. The only one you can trust now is David. Amanda, your time is up. It's almost this time now. I know you're in there. Open up. Get out of here. Look, I want to tell you I something. I don't care what you want. Leave or I'm calling security. Go ahead and call security. I'm not leaving until we talk. It's about Amanda. Well... What a surprise. Go away. ready to prove again that you underestimate me. I did not come here to fight. Breaking down my door is not a friendly gesture. I have to talk to you. Now just listen to what I have to say and then I'll go for good. But I won't leave until then because this is for Amanda's sake. I figured it out, okay? I've been trying to help and it's not working. So I have to do what's right for Amanda. And that means I have to trust you. Imagine a day out. I'm not interested in your epiphanies, Sinclair. I thought you'd be happy. Happy? 
You break down my door because you want to talk to me and you think that would make me happy? I would think an ex-con would want to avoid behavior like that. No? Fine. I'm calling the police. Hey, don't touch me. Look, I'm trying to be straight with you. Why don't you just give me five minutes and then I'll leave? Why should I believe a word you have to say? Because when it comes to Amanda, I won't lie. Yes, you would. You lied before. So why should I believe Look, you? Look, I don't care what you think about me. I only care about Amanda. So let's talk. All right. Outside. What? You want to talk, you can talk to me in the hallway now. Come on. Well, why can't we do it here? What the hell's the problem? I don't like you, Sinclair. I don't want you in here. So just say whatever you have to say and then get out. Okay. Look, I realize that if I want what's best for Amanda... I have to listen to what she has to say. Now, I'm not good for her anymore. Somebody else needs to do that job. What cogent thinking? Are you drunk? Look, this is hard enough as it is. You're not making it any easier. Do I care? You've said enough. Now get out. Are you listening to anything that I have to say? I'm telling you that I'm out of it now. Amanda needs somebody that she can trust. She needs somebody to protect her. Now, I wish that that was me, but it's not. It has to be you. So what I need to know is that you're going to take care of her, that you're going to protect her, and then I can leave. You needed all this time to ask me to do something that I'm already doing. Of course I'll take care of Amanda. That's all I've ever tried to do. Now go. Fine. There's just a couple of other things. Do not tell her that I was here. I want to be able to make a quick exit and not let her know about it. And tell it and I'm... It is nothing. Oh, well, don't say that. I'll be right back. With drugs. Okay. Oh, Miss Gallant, we've checked into your health insurance, and it only covers direct dependents. Well, and as Mr. Radziewiski is not a relative, he's certainly not a direct yes, well, dependent. You're so half he right. is uninsured. He isn't a relative, but he's very dependent. And I'm sure we can straighten all of this out. But right now, he just needs some medicine for pain. But he's not on your health plan. Y yes, I know that. I'm sure if you look at your little clipboard here, you'll see that I am going to pay all of the bills myself. You will pay? Yes. Yes, I will. Yeah, I You'll pay with your own money? The hospital doesn't know about cold, hard cash, is that well, it? Uh, yes, it is rare. I mean, mostly right. we submit forms covering treatment, right. and then the insurance well, carrier... Well, this is really fascinating, forms, but so. right now he needs a doctor to give him some pain medicine. I'm mm -hmm. sure you understand well, that. Well, we have a much bigger problem than that. Than this man that should never have been admitted to the hospital. Why? Why because he's be? uninsured. Yes, yes, I, I know that. Yes, but I... you can't claim him on your health insurance. <laughs> you know what? Why don't you take a few notes? Maybe that will save a little time here because you see i already know he's not insured he's not going to be on my insurance in fact there's not going to be insurance involved in any of this no 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 insurance of any right. kind? no just cash cash on the barrel my cash your barrel all right but somebody i think has to start making that money right now don't you and the first thing we need to do is get a doctor in there or a nurse to give him some pain medicine because he's very sick are you a relative of Mr. Radziewiski's? No. No, just no, a, a do friend. Do you have power of you attorney like, for the Why? Patient? Why would you be care about that? Because you're going to be making uh, financial slash medical decisions for the patient. No, you no, you don't understand. I am not going to, to make any medical and... decisions for, for Sarah Gay. He's going to do that with his doctor. I am only going to pay all the bills. That's with all. With his cash that you mentioned You know, earlier. cash really works outside of this hospital. You yeah, should check that out. I don't think you understand, Miss Gallant. We are not configured to proceed with no real guarantee of payment. Miss Bellick, you get in there or get somebody in there to give him some medicine right now. And you know what I'll do? I'll then come up to your office and I will go over everything with you. I'll fill out any form you want. I will guarantee this bill. I'll even have you call my bank. How's that? Maybe, just maybe, we can figure out a way to take my cash and translate it into some kind of paper that makes you a little less hysterical and frightened. But right now, there is a very sick boy in there and I want you to take care of him. 
Through, and I'm going to send someone up to help Mr. Ratzel. Ah! It's, it's, it's Radzinski. Radzinski, sweetheart! And he is not going anywhere. I know. I know I'm asking you to think a little differently here. I, but couldn't we try to be a little creative? We're never creative with billing. Well, what about for a human being? You think you could step out of the box for that one? Oh. No, look, I, I'm really going to try and stay calm here, okay? But let's not talk about insurance and forms and, and power of attorneys. Let's, let's talk about a young kid who's very, very sick, alone, and in a lot of pain. And the only person he has in the world to pay this bill is me. This freaking bill. I don't want to talk about insurance anymore. Do you understand me? Otherwise, you're going to see my power of attorney. Well, there's no need to get Huffy. Huffy? <laughs> oh, boy. Is that what you think I am right now? Is Huffy, honey? I must be holding back a little here because what you're seeing right now is full-blown anger. Anger! And if you can't get angry about a kid being in critical condition, then I don't know why God would even give you the gift of anger. Do you, Miss Bellick? Well, I, I'm not sure that anger is God. No one can help this boy but me. You understand that? Me. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to raise whatever hell I have to to make sure he gets treated like the richest, most insured person on this planet. And you know what? Honey Bunny, you're going to help me do that. You know that? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You and me, we're going to do this together. And you know what? You're going to feel so much better about your job tomorrow. And if you help me do this, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to be your friend for life. I am. I'm going to send you flowers. I'm going to send you autographed books. I'm even going to get you a hairdresser that will do a miracle thing with this. But if you don't do this for me... You know what's going to happen. I think they call it stat here, don't they? Isn't it stat? Yeah, if you don't help me with the stat, I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to call John Hudson. I'm even going to call the Herald. I may call your bank that holds your mortgage. And would you believe I actually have some friends of a friend who work in the waste management consulting business. Oh, my God, you can't believe what interesting thing they do with me, caps. Are you threatening me? <gasps> Look at this. Look at this. You get it, fun. Progress. Oh, yeah, Miss Bellick. I am threatening you. If you don't get a doctor in that room in five minutes and a nurse in there before that to give this kid some pain medicine, I am going to follow through. I want you to look into my eyes. I mean this. I believe you. Oh. So just sign this form. Oh, yes, gladly. For financial responsibility, I'm sure that that'll tie us over. Would you like me to give you some uh, some money? Would no, that no, make no, you feel no, better? No, no. Mm -hmm. Sure. I have paperwork that will take care Good. of Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Miss Bellin, have a very nice day. No. Yes. Hey. Wish you were gone a long time. Well, I just had a little, uh, a little paperwork snafu. It's okay. What is snafu? Oh, it's just a nuisance. I, I, I took care of it. Felicia, now you are lying to me. No, I'm not. Felicia, I'm right. I cannot have you lie to me. What? What is it that I'm missing? Another part of you. Look, I don't want to drag this out. But I need to know that Amanda's going to be safe. I've told you, she's perfectly safe. You need to know a few things. I can assure you, I'm observant enough to pick up any little... You need to know what I've seen and what her mother has seen. All right. 
make it quick. She wakes up from nightmares. She leaves the house. No one's ever seen her, but we know that she goes, and we think that something's happening there. We found her once at the Cory Garden. You found her there once. Find out why she's going there. Find out why she keeps going to that garden. Find out what's behind that gate. We had a key to it once, and we tried to get in, but to no avail. I just have this sick feeling that something is going on back there, so try to keep her from going there. Fine. Now? There's one other thing. Jordan Stark. He has this power. He can make people see things that aren't even there. That's how he got to Rachel. He tricked her into thinking that Amanda jumped from the clock tower, and then he trapped Rachel there. Rachel saw something, a Lumina, a monitor or something of Amanda jumping. It's a digital scan or something, a tape, but just, it looked real. I've wired the first installment to your account. You continue to keep me appraised of Amanda Corey's movements, and I'll continue to pay you and keep warning her against David Halliday. I did my best here, but I don't want to take any chances. The last thing we need is for Amanda Corey to turn to the one man who can destroy all of our plans. Yeah, that's the last thing we want. You can't trust anything in Lumina. Nothing you see. Because it isn't real. Not. You've heard you say. Now get out. Did you really understand what listen, I was saying? Listen? Yes, and I think I got it. You don't want me to let anything happen to Amanda. I certainly didn't need you to tell me that. Fine. You know, you may not have been a threat that I thought you were to Amanda, but you're still the biggest jerk I've ever met. Felicia, you have the voice of a fine coloratura soprano. Even when you whisper, it goes to second balcony. I was only having a little discussion. Little discussion? Her. I hear about power of lawyer and forms and money and kneecaps. <sighs> then woman with tragic hair <laughs> talks to you and you yell at her about money. You say everything okie dokie, but I know it's cow. Ball. You mean you load of ball? of my English now? Please, Felicia, I cannot let you do this. Oh, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Come on, would you stop worrying about it? I'm not to worry, Felicia, but do you know how much this is going to cost you? Uh huh? And not to mention these two gentlemen in black suits that want to put me, and probably now you, on mm. a slow boat to Baltic Sea. Please, Felicia, this is my problem. You know what? This is my big trouble. It's not your trouble. <sighs> a while ago, somebody sent me a friend. It was a man named Wallingford. And you know, he was a lot like you. He had a hard time trying to find his place in the world. And by all rights, you know, he should have been the saddest and most miserable person on God's green earth. But he wasn't. You know what he was? He was packaged joy. And I don't mean like serenity or, or you know, have a positive attitude all of us thinking people would be comfortable with. No, I mean, walking joy. He would take on people's troubles like, like they were frequent flyer miles. <laughs> and he never, ever turned his back on anyone, ever. And you know, there were times I thought, you know, this is going to be it. This is going to be too much for him. And you know what he would do? It would make him stronger, happier, more joyous. The more he took on. I always hope since then that maybe I could have a little bit of what Wallingford had. And you know what? You're my chance. So come on. Don't hoard it. You could be a gentleman about this and easy for me. 
It's just about some lousy money. So please, could you try to let me have my big break? <laughs> you have the soul of Mother Russia. Oh, and I have a much better one. For <laughs> sure, this. <laughs> Mr. Brzezinski, I have your test results. You said you wanted to speak to me Any before news you go about upstairs. Stark? No, not exactly, but I do have some news. I came here to tell Amanda goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, I can't stay around here anymore. Oh, not really, but that's what you're going to tell her. No, really, I have to stay away permanently. You're going to bail out on Amanda right now when she needs you the most? She needs somebody she can trust. She doesn't trust me anymore. She says that every time I'm around, she gets confused and we can't have that anymore things are getting too dangerous exactly that's why she needs everybody looking out for her don't worry she's got that holiday he'll stick to her like a cheap suit is that what you want no no i feel about that holiday especially after what happened today i'm less than thrilled what happened today well i went over there to tell him that i'm backing off and that he should protect amanda and I'm giving him a list of the things that he should watch out for. And he's giving me this attitude like he's, like he's better than me, like he doesn't care. It doesn't matter how I feel about him. It's Amanda trusts him, and that's what she needs right now. So I have to step aside. There's a lot more to you than meets the eye, Cameron. You can't tell her any of this. Tell her what? That I've been here, what I've said, what I've been thinking, it'll cause her conflict, that we really need her to be of clear mind right now. What do you mean right now? You think Stark is going to do something? Nothing concrete, it's just a feeling that... Yeah, I know, I was saying the same thing to Matthew, it's like the uh, calm before the storm. And that's worrying me a bit now, because Stark, out of control, I believe is going to be a lot more dangerous. Focus. It's all that matters now. You're almost there. Amanda, what are you doing? I have to go. No, don't. No, I have to. I tried to go before, when Cameron was here. I tried to go after him, and I couldn't. It was as something stopped me. It's like something inside me stopped me. Amanda. Obviously, you're overrun, or you wouldn't be feeling this. Just stay here, and you'll feel much better. Don't higher. tell me what to do. I'm sorry. That is the worst thing that you can possibly say to me right now. I just don't understand what went so wrong. I told you. Cameron was here, and I tried talking to him, and I couldn't. It's as if, it's as if something inside me is trying to control me. Well, maybe it's you. Maybe you're the one who told yourself not to talk to Cam. Did you hear what he said? Of course I did, but I didn't believe it, did you? I know him. He's not lying. I can hear it in his voice. Amanda, did you hear it in his voice when he lied to you before? You just wanted him to go. You didn't even care what he was saying. He was saying what Jordan Stark wanted him to say, don't you see? That's why he was going on and on about me not telling you. He was putting on a show of being noble. It's just all part of his act. Why did he do something like that for my benefit? He didn't even know I was here. Yeah, he wanted me to tell you. He knew I would. Oh, no, David, you're wrong. You're wrong. He was trying to protect me. I'm leaving. Amanda, Amanda, you're in no shape to drive. I, I, I can't have you, you get into... You can't have me? What kind of a way is that to talk to me? I am tired of everybody pushing me around and manipulating my life. I can't live like this. Amanda, I would never... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's me. It's me that you can trust. Just a while ago, you, you said I was the only person you could trust in the world. Amanda, what happened to that? I don't know. Some, something snapped. Everybody's telling me how I should think and what I should feel. Well, I don't do that. Yes, you do. You do. You make it all sound so reasonable, as if you're you're helping me and you're just trying to be nice. But under that smile, you're working me all the time. Amanda, that's not true. Please, stay here and we'll talk about it. Uh, no, no. 
No, no more talk. I'm leaving. No. I'm not asking your permission. Amanda, do you're not Don't. leaving. Give me a direct order, ever. I can't believe an hour ago that that was where we were headed. Amanda, it's still where we are headed, or it could be. Please. Please, Amanda, it, it's what you wanted, too. I know, I'm sorry. I misled you, David. I was, I was afraid, and I felt very alone, and neither one of those are very good reasons f for sleeping with someone. Amanda, Amanda, you care about me. You're just, you're trying to protect yourself, but you don't need to. Amanda, let me protect you now. No, no, I know you, I know you want to do that. That's not what I want. I want my life back. I'm sorry, but we, we can't be any more than friends. And I've got to go. What? She was upstairs. She was supposed to be sleeping. We all saw her go upstairs, and not one person saw her go down. I'm telling you, I'm going to fire those security people. She's off the grounds. Rachel, it's okay. She's probably not off the grounds. We know where she goes when she gets like this. I'll go find her. Cameron, you may think she thinks she needs David, but I think she needs you. Thanks. But I blew it. You can't have my daughter. Amanda, are you all right? Yes. I guess it's pointless for me to ask you where you were. Uh, I'll explain in a minute, Mom. Right now, I've got to call Cameron. I need no, to talk to him. No, you don't need to call him. He's here. What? He came over. He's trying to make sure you're safe, Amanda. I'm starting to believe that. There you go. You should feel less pain in about 20 minutes. Great. Before you get too woozy, there are a few questions that I need to ask you. Is there a history of anemia in your family? My mother, she died of aplastic anemia, they say. Is that what Sergei has? Well, it's not that simple. Uh, we seem to run across a mixture of things we can't quite sort out just yet. There is a rare type of aplastic anemia, and there are severe abnormalities in your bone marrow stem cells. What does that mean exactly? Well, it appears Sergei is going into bone marrow failure. His hemoglobin levels are at six now. That's too few red blood cells being produced. Add that to his liver, his spleen, and his uh, lymph node enlargement. And I have to tell you, we have a serious condition. Have you ever been exposed to lead toxins, chemotherapy, or any form of radiation? I play soccer near Chernobyl. Does that count? Sergei's family lived near the plant when he was a child. And your mother, is this what caused her aplastic anemia? No, of course not. They said that there was no danger of radiation from plant, that this is what they said in news, but they did not say why she died. Only the nurse in the hospital whispered these words to me. And I write them down, because I think maybe someday I'm going to hear them again very helpful. I am going to call some colleagues of mine. Uh, they did a lot of tests after that accident. I may run across a similar case. And, doctor, when can I leave? Well, I have to run some more tests, and I'm calling in a hematologist. Hmm. And we'll know more after he's done his testing about the possibilities of a bone marrow transplant. And tests? How much are tests going to cost? Oh, no, no, don't worry about that. Is there something that you can do for him right now? Ordinarily, we consider a blood transfusion, but that could compromise us finding a match for a blood marrow donor, so we can't risk that. So, until we get a definitive diagnosis, we'll just keep treating the symptoms as best we can. 
And what is numbers? What numbers? How many people do not die from this? I can't tell you that right now, Sergey. If it's aplastic anemia only and we find a positive match, then the survival rate is 60%. Slightly higher in some cases. But I don't just have anemia. I have other things that you don't know. Well, we're still working on that. And if you do not find problem, how much of my life do I have, doctor? How much time? Sergey, you're getting way ahead of yourself. This is not the time to be giving up. Well, doctor, you will give me a warning when it's time to give up. My mother, she was gone in six weeks. Like I said before, Sergey, we know a lot more now than we did then. Yeah, but not about me. I know it's very, very frightening to be sitting around waiting for answers. But please, just give us a little more time. Wait for the test results to come in. He's right. You're jumping to conclusions. The doctors here are the best. Much better than the admitting clerks, I can tell you that. We'll be moving very quickly. The hematologist from Chicago will be here first thing in the morning. Okay. Just give us a little more time. I hear you have some trouble with the paperwork on the Oh, nothing I can't handle. I apologize for that. I've had a word with the clerk, and she's promised to streamline the whole process for you. If you go down there now and take care of it, it should only take a few minutes. Great, thank you. Thank you. you to stay strong here. Just work on getting well, all right? Can you do that? What? I'm just think about when I go to work for Limo Company, how I'm so disgusted because I think this work is so beneath Sir Gerizinski. And then I find out driving a real age. You probably say that to all the girls, don't you? <laughs> hey, I'll be right back. Okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> smooth, Radzinski. You thought we wouldn't come back and search the same place twice? I am here because I am sick. Oh, sorry, Sergey. You're gonna need a note from home for that excuse. There's the problem, isn't it, Sergey? 
we have to get you home. Now, do you need help packing? Because honestly, son, you're on the next plane back to the motherland. But I can't. All you have to do is sit on a plane. We'll handle the rest. Now let's go. No, please. This is wrong. Let go of me. Put that man down this instant. You thought I was in there? Nobody goes in there. Nobody has ever been in there. Are you sure? Yes. You've never been in there? No, I think I would remember. Why? Doesn't matter. You were looking for me. Yeah. I came to tell you goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, for a while now you've been trying to send me the message that I should get out of your life, so I figured it's time I pay attention. That's what all that commotion was about. You seemed a little desperate for someone that was just coming by to say goodbye. Yeah, well, I never said I was good at this. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there. Look, if you uh, go on holiday, you're, you're welcome to them. Let's go ahead. Go ahead, go back to the house, call him, whatever. Just leave her, right? Leave me alone. Is that really what you want? There's nothing left between us. I know I was slow to get it, but I... I got it. No, you didn't. Trust me, I understand. I believe it now. You're lying. You're lying and I can prove it. Turn around. Monday on Another World. David Halliday knows something that he doesn't want us to know. And we have to make it our business to find out what that is. She doesn't realize it yet. She's figured out my secret. When have you ever known what's good for you? Take your hands off my fiancé or I'll remove them for you. Look what you've done to him! <laughs> NBC Tonight, Sid's relationship with Paul goes very public when he's subpoenaed by a grand jury on an all-new Providence. Then, on an all-new Dateline, housework, are you forever cleaning up after your family? Dateline puts his hidden cameras in one family's home to find out who's making such a mess. A revealing new Dateline, followed by an all-new homicide, tonight on NBC. Chat with fellow fans of your favorite NBC TV programs all while you're watching TV. Primetime, daytime, and TNBC. It all happens online at NBC.TalkCity.com. Join the conversation.